Oh, what a weird thing. I've got a bright light above my head and the shadows on my face are all scary. Anyway, I'm going to show you something. I've been making these butterflies. You recall, I started with a piece of paper that was four and a half inches. And I folded it to, to look like a butterfly. It's very easy to fold this. Fold it first of all on a diagonal. So it folds that way into a diagonal. Fold in like that. make a line down the middle, they fold in like that on that side, and that side folds in like that as well. So you have, a, again, a triangle with the two sides folded in. And then I take one point, fold it down, and one point and fold it down, and now you can see my pattern on there because I colored it to make sure that I could get something the same each time. And when I have those folded down at the back side, the point that comes down, I just fold that up like that. So that is the little butterfly. So when, when you're working with a piece of fabric, that starts off in that shape. It's a little bit more tricky and you have to select the fabric based on whether or not you can fold it and crease it. And I chose silk because silk will press very well with a steam iron and it stays, stays pressed until you unpress it with another steam iron. So it's a good choice and I've had some success with the different weights. I've been taking two pieces of fabric, one the color side, see here there's going to be two different colors, and the other side of this one is a very light organza type fabric because I wasn't sure about this, this side at all. It's quite thick compared with some of the others I'm using. But what I've decided to do is add some beads. So with this, I cut two squares, sewed the right sides together, left a little space so I could turn it inside out. And then I stitched around the whole outside and now what I'm doing with this particular one is I'm sewing a row of little seed beads around the outside because they will form part of the outer part of the wing. So in order to do that, you really need to have a few things, a beading needle, and I bet you can't even see that. Oh, there you can see it against there. A beading needle which is very long thin and mine is kind of bent because I, I bent it. it makes it easier for me another thing that is useful is one of these trays the tray has an opening at one end so you can pour the beads back into the container you just pour them back in and usually I'll show you how, how this is done, but I'm trying it backwards. So, so I, I take my needle, and with these little things, all I have to do is touch it on the side, and it pops onto the needle. You see that? Pops onto the needle, and then I can stitch it in place. And if I were really doing a extravagant beading, I would probably put five or six on a needle. And put them in and then they form loops and they form all kinds of things but in this case I'm doing a really simple just around the outside 
and all I'm doing with it is just a straight stitch into the um, out, outside of the piece of fabric and I'm just pulling it up and it will just lay on the place where I'm going. So I'm just going around the outside. It's really all too small to try to show you how I'm doing this. But whatever you do with beads, it's, it's uh, not a fast process, that's for sure. So here's another one. I'm just taking the end of the needle, pushing it through the fabric. The bead will lie on there. And then I just go and put the next one on. It's, it's not going to be um, a pattern that is perfectly symmetrical on both sides because, you know, I don't think butterfly wings are perfectly symmetrical on either side either. So anyway, I'll continue with this one, but I'll show you a couple that I have finished. In this case, when I folded the edge, this edge you see is open. That's the open side. And I inserted a piece of uh, lace in that open side. And then I sewed that closed. And when I sewed it closed, I don't know if you can see, I stitched a row of beads on there as well, all the way across. So I've got some lace inserted and I've got a row of beads on there. And the two parts, remember the, two, the parts, they're different colors because they're the different sides of the, sides of the um, part that you sew together. So in this case, the, the part that is down here, I just left it hang and at the bottom, I added some beads to sort of give a bit of length to the end of the wing. And I did add a couple of beads up here to give the illusion of eyes. So that one is not bad. Kind of pretty. This one, I used a piece of uh, a lace, a lace doily. Remember I said I've got this bucket of lace pieces? I, I just took a, a doily from my lace bucket and when I cut out my square, I just centered it where I wanted it. This happened to be a pink, a pink one. And I used, I used part of that doily. So you can see the back side of the wing. It's got the rest of the doily. Crocheted, it was hand crocheted. It's kind of a sad thing to cut it apart, but I've got a whole box full of those things that I got at an auction sale for a little sum of money. So I've got things I can do with them. So because the, crochet has got openings you can see the backing fabric through it so I just left the backing fabric plain but what I did when I uh, folded it and shaped it into the butterfly I added some eyes I added some beads to come down the front to form sort of a body and on the underside of the wing wing portion I added some more beads on the underside so that's kind of the way that one's going to look. I don't think I'll change that one. But all, all of the pieces are, all of the butterflies are going to be quite different. This one is folded slightly differently than this one here. This one has the opening at the top. This one, the, the I sewed it all the way around and it, is just folded. I'll show you how I do that one. Maybe. 
I'll see if I can do that. But this one is how this, this one is made. That's how that one is made. So it's slightly different than the way that this one, which is a square, it forms into this shape, which is slightly different because then the uppers and the lowers are slightly differently formed than this one is. So there's lots of different ways of folding. And if you get any kind of origami instruction off the internet or from a book, you will find different ways of making them. And I recommend that you make some paper shapes first. They're a lot easier to fold and they're much easier to uh, to dispose of if you haven't spent a lot of time on it. You've got a piece that you can use as your pattern. But it's been kind of fun. But I'm, I must admit that um, my eyes are not as good as they used to be. And my fingers sure aren't as good as they used to be either. Here's another one with sort of just blues and golds. They're all kind of different. It's, it's all in the fabric that you choose. This is a nice, nice little one. I think this is going to be a nice one. I'm going to put some beads all along this edge around here, I think. All around this edge here. That That's a nice color. I like that one. So they're, they're not all going to be uh, diamonds. Some of them are going to be stones. But you have to sort of... Just take it uh, as it comes and decide whether you like it or not. I think I've taken this this one apart three times already. I like the green fabric, but it was a bit bulky to fold. It's quite, it, and it's also quite, um, I didn't put any interfacing in it. Some of the other ones have been putting a piece of really lightweight interfacing into them. But anyway, it's it's coming along. And I'm happy with what I'm doing. It's kind of a slow process. But um, when I finish this beading project, I think I've got a 13-year-old friend who might really enjoy <laughs> enjoy having a bucket full of beads. And uh, I think I might just pass them on to somebody who's much younger and much more dexterous with their fingers. So that's sort of update update. So I'll update you again another time. Let you see how how, how it's going. <laughs> All right, bye for now.